Starlink, the satellite internet service provided by SpaceX, is facing some high expectations and unfulfilled promises. Today, I'm going to go over three expectations that Starlink just has not fulfilled. I'm Sherry, your telecom expert with Whistle Out. Thanks for watching. The first headwind that SpaceX and Starlink just haven't really pushed through is availability of the service. Initially, it was supposed to be rapidly expanding around the country and the world, but there are still many people who really need the service that just aren't able to get it. Basically, the rollout is slower than anticipated, which is rubbing some people the wrong way. The first annoyance with this expectation of service are wait lists. People who really need satellite internet, who don't have access to cable or fiber, or really only have satellite as an option, are on wait lists. And those are the people that need it the most, and that is getting frustrating. Now, some people are getting around wait lists by signing up for the roam plans that Starlink offers, which are made for people who are nomadic or maybe living or traveling in their RVs and vans, those plans don't have wait lists, but they are a bit more expensive. Now, because some people are bypassing the wait list for these Rome plans, there is lots of congestion in areas that just doesn't have the avail availability to fulfill the needs of all of the Starlink users. Because people are saying they are going to be roaming and they're not roaming, that is causing just a little bit of slowdowns in some areas. The second unmet expectation is pricing. Starlink is expensive and it's only going up from here. Demand has increased and therefore Starlink is upping those prices. Now the barrier for entry with Starlink has always been in the couple hundred of dollars, but the plans are increasing in price too. The initial cost of service for Starlink was $600 for the terminal and $100 a month for service. Now we've seen that increase rapidly from 100 to 124 residential and up to 150 to 250 for Rome plans. And that brings the initial startup cost from anywhere from $720 to $850, which is pretty insane. That's, that's, that's a pretty penny. And for a company who was touting to have reliable and easily accessible internet, uh, easily accessible is not nearly a thousand dollars for a startup cost, at least in this YouTuber's opinion. And lastly, the third headwind that SpaceX is facing is space debris on multiple fronts. Space debris that could cause their satellites to be damaged and the fact that their satellites are eventually going to turn into debris itself. Now, Starlink satellites are supposed to burn up upon re-entry into our atmosphere. However, that's not always the case. And specifically, the Federal Aviation Administration has some serious concerns. They say that Starlink represents more than 80 5% of the total expected risk to people on the ground for debris from space re-entering the atmosphere and potentially injuring or killing somebody. And that is significant. That Starlink holds 85% of the risk here more than any other type of space debris, which makes a lot of makes a lot of sense. Starlink's really the only one sending enough satellites up into space where it could be cause for concern. Thanks for watching. What do you think are some headwinds Starlink is facing? What are some annoyances you have with them? I'd be curious to know. Let me know in the comments below. I'm Sherry, your telecom expert with Whistle Out.